So let's start using MASH. Let's select our land info object, move to the MASH shelf, and press this icon here, which is Create MASH Network. And all of a sudden, we see 10 clones of our land geo object. Adding a MASH network creates two new objects in the outliner. The first is the MASH1 object. When selected, this acts as the brain of the MASH network, where nodes are added which are similar to adding cloners and MoGraph effectors in Cinema 4D. The second object is the MASH1 repro mesh. This is the actual geometry that MASH1 creates and is adjusted on the fly. As we can see, the original land infill object has been hidden. So when the MASH geometry is selected in the viewport, it is the MASH1 repro mesh that is being selected. Fundamentally, this isn't too different from what's happening when a cloner is added in Cinema 4D, but it is a different way of doing things. To access the MASH1 node, select it in the outliner. In the attribute editor, there are three tabs. There is the MASH1 tab, where nodes, the direct equivalent of MoGraph effectors, are added. The second tab is the distribute node. The distribute node is like Cinema 4D's cloner and matrix object wrapped into one. The final tab is the repro node. This is where we can see what geometry we have added to our MASH network. Here we can see our land info object, and also what order it is in, which matters especially when we have the ID node attached, but we'll be looking at that in more depth later. Let's look at the distribute node so that we can create the large ground plane we need. In the distribution type, let's switch this to grid. Let's close our linear options and move to our grid options, and let's just bring our object in. We need to change the distance in X and Z to 4, and we want 5 and 5 in our grid. There we go. We can see all our elements in one shape. We need 9 of these landscape geometry elements for our city. If we were doing this in Cinema 4D, we would make our existing cloner a child of a new cloner. This can create a rabbit warren of cloners, as well as creating a heavy scene. MASH is much more efficient at replication, as it can all be managed within one MASH network. To create our first row of landscape blocks, in the MASH1 tab, which we select by the outliner and then come over here, add a replicator node, which is here. Add replicator node. It is a good idea at this point to press the icon of four lines up here. This pulls up the new for Maya 2017 MASH editor, which gives a quick selectable overview of any MASH networks in a scene and what nodes each network has applied. We can now dock the match editor. So I'm going to dock mine here. There we go. We can now select a newly created MASH1 replicator node here. We are going to add two replicants, give them an offset position X value of six and zero in the Z. Let's just create another replicator node using the MASH editor. Select that, add replicator node, and this time our replicants Again, will be two, but as we can see, it is replicating our first replicator node, and we'll set our offset position in Z to six. I'm going to zoom out. By using this method, we can create a lot of geometry very quickly and efficiently using just one mesh network. We can now animate our first mesh network. Just as in Cinema 4D with cloners and effectors, we can use a combination of mesh nodes combined with fall loss to animate the mesh geometry with a minimum of keyframes. For this specific geometry, we need the land sections to appear from nothing in a wave motion. First, we shall make the elements appear. To do this, in our MASH network, we need to add an offset node. Add offset node. Set the offset scale across all three elements to minus one. As we can see, everything disappears. We need to create a fall off to help control the visibility. MASH can either create its own locator-based falloffs or use polygon-based geometry objects. For what we need, a locator-based falloff works best. In the falloff object dropdown, which is here, right-click and press Create. And we see a spherical falloff appear in the viewport, dissipating the MASH object. In the outliner, we can see a falloff MASH1 offset has been added. The falloff object can be moved, scaled, or rotated like any object. As we can see here, we're moving. Let's move it to the center. There we go. And let's scale it to hide the rest of our geometry. Just use the channel box. There we go. We can now animate the scale attributes. Let's now right click and key select it. And we can see a small red line appear and one 
down here in the timeline as well. We're going to move to frame 30. And now we're going to middle mouse button our scale with our channel box selected down to zero. There we go. And then right click and key selected. As you can see, we now have an animation. Don't worry about the middle piece of landscape remaining clear. This is going to be covered by our tower object later. If the playback is too fast, we can right click and set our playback speed, play every frame, max real time. Now it's time to add some random noise to this animation. For this, select the mash one object and add a signal node, which is a new name for the noise node. This animates the repro mesh elements according to the values in the noise settings with no need for keyframing. We need more noise in the Y position and less in the X and Z position. So let's make the values, the values here, three, oh, not 3000, three, 30 and three. To animate the noise parameters, we can use a fall off object we created for the offset node earlier to animate the signal node. In the outliner, choose the fall off one mash offset object. And with our signal node selected, go to the fall off objects and right click and connect. Now we can see our signal node working with our offset node to create some noise as we move in and out. The only thing that is remaining to be fixed is the harshness that we have in the animation. In Cinema 4D, the delay effector is great for smoothing out motion or adding a spring. Thankfully, MASH has the spring node, which is MASH1, add spring node. Now, as we move our timeline back and forth, we can see the spring node smoothing our main animation and adding a second rebounds. We have now completed our first MASH network. The only thing we have to do is rename the MASH object to MASH1 infill and do the same with the repro mesh and the falloff. 